Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to hop on and give you some tips for buying pre-loved bags, um, particularly on Poshmark and particularly pre-loved coach bags. I think it's really easy to find a great deal on some pre-loved coach bags on Poshmark, uh, and I'll give you some of my tips for finding those great deals, but I do think you do have to do your due diligence and learn a bit about the bag, ask the seller some really good questions so that you know what kind of bag you're getting um, and in what condition it's in. So the first thing I wanted to show you was how to find good deals on coach bags. So um, the way that I usually find really good deals on coach purses on Poshmark is really trying to take advantage of sellers who don't do their homework. So the thing I'm trying to look for is for sellers who don't know how much their bag is worth, don't know the name of their bag, don't really understand how to sell on Poshmark. Um, because all of these things will mean that the seller is probably having a tough time selling on Poshmark, which probably means that they're willing to let their bag go at a lower price than someone who kind of knows the system, knows the name and worth of their bag. Um, so that's like, I guess it sounds a little bit predatory, but that's really what I do to try to get a good deal. Um, so the first thing that I do in order to do this is I usually try to search for something generic. I'm not looking for a Coach Lexi bag. I'm not looking for a Coach Turnlock tote. What I'm looking for is Coach purse, as you can see up there in the, um, the, the search query. Um, and this is, again, to take advantage of people who don't necessarily know the exact name of their bag. And then I'm filtering. If you see um, there kind of in the middle of the screen, I'm filtering to a lower set of price points between $25 and $50 or even $50 to $100. And then there on the right side of the screen, you can see that I'm also searching for bags that recently had their price dropped. So these, again, this indicates to me that the seller wants to get the bag out of their house. Maybe they don't really care about recouping their cost um, and they're really eager to sell. So that's really what I'm looking for to try to look for these really good deals on pre-loved bags on Poshmark. So this is kind of one example of such a bag. Um, this is a coach reversible tote from the outlet. The first thing you can see is that the seller doesn't really know the name of the bag. Um, and so maybe that means that they've had trouble selling it. It me might also mean that buyers have had trouble searching for it because you know people who are searching for a coach reversible tote will just not get this in their search results because it's not anywhere in the uh, title of the item. So this looks like a really good deal. And honestly, in my opinion, it is a really good deal because these bags usually retail for $100 at the outlet. Um, but one thing that you need to know is you need to really do your due diligence and learn about the bag. So one thing about this bag is that it comes with an interior wristlet that has the creed on it. And without that interior wristlet, this bag doesn't have a creed at all. You have to decide whether that's important to you. And if it is, then maybe this $40 price point is actually quite high for you because you're missing a really important part of the bag. The point here is really look up the bag style, try to see what it is and see what it comes with to make sure that you ask whether you're getting all of the pieces of the bag. So again, this is a similar example. You have a coach messenger purse. Now I'm pretty sure this is a coach uh, kit crossbody, um, but the seller doesn't really show anything about the bag. Um, the condition is ambiguous. So if you look at the description there, they just say used but in good shape. So this is super um, ambiguous. It's really hard to tell whether there are any stains on the exterior of the bag. And a big red flag to me is that there's no interior shots. There's no telling what's on the inside of the bag. Is it ripped? Is it nasty? Does it have a ton of stains on it? You really just don't know. So when I would find a listing like this, I would ask the seller a ton of questions. Can you give me more pictures? Do you have a picture of the creed so that I can look up the style and see um, you know, what it usually retails for and what I would expect um, should be a resale value for it? Um, but like a listing like this, I would never purchase it until the seller answered kind of all of my questions because there's really just no information on the condition of the bag here. So this is a listing, I'm pretty sure, for a Coach Kelsey satchel, based on the pictures. Um, I haven't looked up the Creed number, but one thing you can see for this seller is that they did actually include a picture of the Creed. It's the fourth picture down. So one thing that I do like about this listing, so first of all, you can see again, it's a really good price. It's $50. Usually this bag retails at the outlet for at least $80, I would say, um, so good deal. Um, one thing I really like about this listing is that the description is um, is more, it has more information. So it's a burgundy crossbody and it's used only a few times in excellent condition. 
So I usually look for statements like this, not necessarily because I think the seller is being honest or I think my definition of an excellent condition is the same as the seller's, but actually because it will give me a good reason to open a case and return the bag if it's in worse condition than I expect. If you say a bag is in excellent condition and then it comes to me and it has a huge stain on it or it has a rip in the leather or something, that's really an easy case for Poshmark to look at and say, well, you know, by any definition of the word excellent, this bag is not in excellent condition. They'll approve my return and it'll be all good to go. And for those of you who don't know how um, buying works on Poshmark, just kind of an overview, uh, the way that it works is that you, um, you buy from a seller, you can ask them questions, so you can leave comments or anything on a listing, you publicly can ask them any questions you want, and then you decide whether or not you want to make an offer for less than what they've listed it at, or whether you want to buy at their current listed price. Um, I usually make an offer because a lot of the time sellers are willing to negotiate, so I just try to negotiate. Sometimes they're not willing to and I end up buying at the list price but it's always worth a try in my opinion um, and so then you make an offer or buy it and then eventually they accept your offer and then they and then you buy it and then the seller has a week to ship it to you you get the bag and then when you get the bag you have three days to look it over and decide whether or not you want to keep it or whether there's something wrong with it and you want to open a case for a return with Poshmark Returns are um, less common on Poshmark, so there is like a process where you have to open a case, a Poshmark customer service agent has to review the case and decide whether or not you can get a return. So um, it's a process and you need to have a valid reason for a return. You can't just change your mind. It has to be that the seller didn't describe the purchase in like an accurate way. So that is why I really look for statements like excellent condition or like new condition because that to me, it makes it seem like I would have a really easy case if I did see um, undisclosed damage on the bag. It would be an easy case for Poshmark to approve the return. So this is another example of that. Again, the description of this red coach crossbody, which again is only 40 bucks, super cheap, um, it says is it in, it's in perfect condition and it has adjustable straps. One thing I look for a lot with small bags like this, though, is whether there are um, measurements. So small bags like this can be really, really surprising. You get it and actually it's only like four inches tall and six inches wide, which then is kind of useless to me. It doesn't have any information on a strap drop, so you don't know if it can be used uh, crossbody or if it's more of a shoulder style. Um, so the thing I would ask this seller for would be definitely, can I have some measurements? But otherwise, you know, this listing is something that I might be interested in. It's a good price. Uh, they have pictures of the interior, if you can see that fourth picture down there, and they describe it as perfect condition. So this would certainly be something that I would be interested in looking at. Next up is this vintage coach bag. Now, vintage coach can be found for pretty inexpensive on Poshmark, especially if you kind of dig around and wait long enough for someone to lower their prices enough um, for it to become affordable. So for example, this vintage bag is only $25, which is a great deal. But the biggest thing I always check with these vintage bags is whether the piping is exposed. So on the corners or on the edges of the entire bag, there's piping where the leather has been kind of rolled over itself. If that piping starts to rip, the, the piping starts to like wear down and you can see some white, that's impossible I, in, I, in my experience to repair. So that's something that I always look for. And if I see that, then it's a no-go for me regardless of the price. Um, one thing to, to note on this particular listing is that they say that this purse may be designed by Bonnie Cashin, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, bags that are designed by her are very, um, very valuable, so it's a good chance that this bag is definitely not designed by her, and I think that's a common keyword that people try to include in their vintage listings just to kind of get on top of the listings for people who are looking for that specialty item. So I would definitely, you know, kind of disregard a statement like that um, where the seller doesn't really know and is kind of exploiting keywords to their advantage. So this is another vintage coach bag. Again, the number one thing I would check is to see whether the piping is damaged, but otherwise this looks like a really beautiful bag. Um, one thing I would note for for the court bag or the Willis or the uh, station bag, the ones that come with detachable shoulder straps, make sure the strap is in the pictures. Um, a lot of people will be selling these 
bags with the strap missing and they either don't mention it in the description or they might mention it in the comments but you know you really do need to double check because the worst thing is if you buy a bag get it it doesn't have the strap and then you realize like that is actually something the seller disclosed so you don't have a case to really return the bag um, and so that's really kind of all of the tips I can think of right now off the top of my head um, for buying pre-loved bags on Poshmark. Like I said, I do think it's really easy to get a good deal on coach bags, especially outlet bags. Um, I kind of feel like I may not even shop at the outlet anymore because it's so easy to find a good deal on Poshmark on basically brand new bags. Um, but I do have kind of a process where I do think about the listing and see whether it has details that I need before I hit that buy button. So. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other tips for buying pre-loved bags or if you have any questions and I will see you next time. Bye!